Hello. Uh, today, very exciting day. Uh, today I bring a game review for Emilio. Um, he sent me uh, a SGF file, a game record of his match versus uh, bot, GN Yugo. Um, he says he's about the 20Q level, and in the email he sent me, um, he said that one of his uh, main weaknesses is that his groups get captured, although it doesn't happen in this game, but it was actually possible for a long time, so we'll take a look at that. Um, and another one is, he says, when I realize that my opponent is making a big moyo, I just can't see a proper way to reduce, not to mention invade. And it does happen in this game. So, I will try to point out um, the key with moyos and like big areas is that you want to invade or reduce not too early and not too late. You want to go at just the right time. Um, and that can be difficult to determine exactly when the right time is. So we will take a look at it in this game. Uh -huh. So Emilio is black and the bot is white. So this, uh, I'm going to focus just on black's moves for the most part because the bot is just a computer and it's not the focus. So um, most people would, <laughs> well, I think everyone would say this is unusual and probably not good. So black takes three corners, which is very nice. Um, this attach is not often played in the very early stage of the opening because um, the proper uh, pattern would be this, where um, black kicks and then makes this knight's move extension, and white extends three spaces. And in the general case, this is good for white, um, because, let's see, um, White makes territory down in this A area already, and this um, this B stone, it has a really nice relationship with White's position in the upper left. So already, White is starting to turn this into a really big area of influence. And in comparison, in the bottom left, Black has some solid territory, but it's not nearly as big as White's. Um, so this is generally not played. The exception, and, and when I say this, I mean it's uh, this C4 move is generally not played. The exception, which comes up uh, fairly frequently actually, is if black, oh, whoops, if black already has a stone in this C9 area, um, then the C4 kick is played quite often because it forces white to make only a small extension. So there's not quite enough room for white to make a base. And black can look to attack this. Mm -hmm. uh, so black approaches here, which is to play something in this area is good. But I think normally white should have um, played this extension instead of the knight's move. Jump here. So since this area is still wide open, I think it's uh, easier for black to just play a, a splitting move like this to split white into two different groups. So if white approaches uh, from the upper left corner, then no problem. Black can just extend and make a base. And it's also true going the other way. So this would be a really calm and uh, simple way to split up white's big area. And then I think the game is good for black, because black has three corners, and white's big area is already um, invaded, already reduced. So up to here, in this bottom right corner, this is the proper sequence. But black plays elsewhere, which I think is a mistake. Um, 
this R2 is a very, very, very big point for a couple of reasons. First of all, if black descends here, we can say that the B area is solid territory. Black's corner is completely solid, nothing to worry about. Um, by comparison, these three white stones still don't need a base. Uh, we could imagine that if white played somewhere else, Black could maybe even play this to attack really severely, or at the very least could play something like this. And now the white group has no base and would have to run out. So all of a sudden, um, I mean already in the opening, white has a weak group that black is able to exploit. So uh, after black descends, white needs to play a move around here, some kind of extension in this area and then after that now black could return to the upper right and take this point um, after securing the bottom right group. Later on we'll see that um, white is going to get R2. I think it's a big enough point where white could play it immediately because um, with this R2 now <laughs> R2D2 Star Wars joke um, <laughs> when white plays R2 then the black group here, it's not clearly alive because uh, white can look for, if black plays somewhere else, white could even cut and completely destroy the black group's base. So it feels like black would need an answer, in which case, if we compare this shape to black descending, uh, it's very big difference Oops. Very big difference on territory. White could even play one more to be completely alive and take over the corner. And black is making only maybe nine points at the most, at the absolute most, compared with if black plays this, then black has at least 15 points in the corner for sure and can look to attack white's group. So this is a kind of key point that's uh, very, very important. Um, and if you start to... it's difficult to see, I think, the second line move in the opening. Normally playing on the second line is too... it's too low. Um, but if you start to notice points like this where it's a really big point for the eye space of both groups, um, your strength will increase quite a bit when you start to notice these. So white plays to surround black's corner, and black plays somewhere else. Normally, um, playing this diagonal move is almost always a bad move. Uh, white can just uh, extend like this and completely solidify the corner. So almost always in this scenario, it's better for black to attach like this. Um, the calm response would be white hanes on this side, black extends, white fixes the cut, and then black could extend along the side. And this seems white gets the corner and some influence on the top, and black takes the left. So this seems okay for both. Um, well, in this game, this would be good for black because this stone is an extension from black's A group, and it also reduces the influence of white's B group. So in this game, this would be really good for black, actually. Uh, but anyway, with this diagonal move, white can take the corner, and then if you compare the territory, it looks like um, one, two, three, four, five. It looks like white's going to get at least ten points up on the top, probably some more, um, compared with. This way, uh, we don't know who's going to get B18 yet, so the only territory that's white's for sure is here. It looks like six or seven points difference. Um, and uh, also, black gets more territory than in the game. Um, just to... So if we imagine... Doo -doo 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 -boop. Um, 
So this scenario comes up sometimes where um, black approaches, like let's pretend black just approached to white's corner, white plays somewhere else, and black wants to continue in the corner. If black plays this diagonal move, then white can easily take the corner, and uh, black still needs to extend. So it's the same number of stones, but white, I mean, uh, white and black each play three stones in this area, but white gets even more territory than black does, uh, which is seems unfair considering black got a second move. So black would want to play this attachment, and this is a uh, common joseki, common pattern shape. Okay, so moving on. Um, black responds here, which is okay, but after black plays here, if I were white, I would want to play this right away, um, because then this black group still doesn't have, uh, it looks like black doesn't have room for two eyes. So white can take both sides, white gets this A area and the B area, and still black needs to do something in order to make a living shape. Um, hmm. So this move, E14, it doesn't, it's a little bit slow. It doesn't really put pressure on white's group as a whole, and it doesn't really make many points. Uh, black already has a really strong shape here, so I would prefer um, maybe playing this to put pressure on white's two stones on the right side and that also enlarges the corner. Or maybe something along the top. This can look for follow-ups around this A area to like attack the white group as a whole rather than uh, just the one B stone. Um, also I think it's this move <laughs> is still big enough to play because white's three stones need they would need to play some kind of move over here to make a base. So I think it's still possible to play this. Uh, and black takes solid territory, and white is weak. So uh -huh. let's continue on. Again, this move I feel is too slow. Um, this is the kind of move where um, if you compare black's five stones here, with black six stones here, how much benefit does the six stone actually give the group? And it looks like maybe black takes three more points, through like three more points at the most, right? Um, because this group is already alive, it's got plenty of space for eyes on the left side. Black doesn't need to play another move for this group. Even if black wanted to, I think this would be bigger to turn this entire corner into black's territory. You could compare with white playing here to take the corner. Um, it looks like white takes, if white takes six points in the corner compared with black takes eight points in the corner, that means this move is worth at least 15 or 14 points I guess. Um, but still, so one of the concerns that Emilio had was that um, uh, I want to make sure I get the wording right. Ah, when I realize that my opponent is making a big moyo, I just can't see a proper way to reduce, not to mention invade. So a move like this is part of the problem, where it's too slow and it doesn't threaten any of White's groups. So instead, mm, Black could play here to split Oh, maybe, maybe this would be better. This is like a pincer technique on the G4 stone. But some move in the bottom area to invade and prevent white from building a moyo here. Or this one to prevent white from building an area on the top. Um, let's see. 
Ah, see if white gets this point, which is a really nice point for white because it enlarges the top while simultaneously putting some pressure on black's corner. But if you compare with this, you can see it's the exact opposite. White's uh, upper left group is put under a lot of pressure. It looks like there's white will need some kind of response to try to make um, eye shape. And at the same time, black is able to increase the upper right by quite a bit. Ah, and white gets this big point. Now it's painful for black in the bottom right. <clears throat> ah, so here uh, Emilio left the comment. I suspect this move is small, but one of my weaknesses is to value too much single stones because as a chess player, he kind of compares stones with pawns. But in this case, this capture is actually very, very good. It's very big because um, it's similar to the move R2 from earlier where not only is this a strong defensive move where now the bottom left of black is completely strong, completely alive, but it has follow-ups where um, white plays somewhere else, then okay, black can go ahead and cut, push and cut separate white into two different groups. Um, it looks very difficult to handle as white. We could maybe imagine this happening, but white's going to lose four stones, which is pretty big, and there's actually there's still a cutting point here. <laughs> so white would have to fix. Or if white plays the other way, black can escape and look to attack both A and B at the same time. And um, because of this capture with the F3 stone, Black's corner is completely solid, completely alive, nothing to worry about. So it's like a really nice feeling where Black can attack to his heart's content and not have to worry about defending down here. So basically, Black's three stones here are weak, but White has two weak groups to worry about. So if White plays a move to help the A group, then the B group comes under attack. And if white plays a move to help the B group, then the A group comes under attack. So either way, black wins. Um, so, um, and then there's, so white plays here. There's also possibly this one to push through and cut, separate into A and B. So, um, Moves like this capture are actually very big because it's um, the the term that gets used a lot is thick. Black is very thick in this area now. It's very powerful. Doesn't have to worry about eye shape or a base at all. So black can fight to his heart's content and can look for these cutting points at A and B. Uh, if we compare with instead. White should have played this extension to save the stone. Now, black is still alive, but there is no weakness at all in white's outside shape. If black tries to come out and cut, it just doesn't work because these two stones are captured in a net. So by comparison, this white's group is really, really strong. It's kind of it's not quite the opposite. Black doesn't have a weak group, but um, but white's group is so strong, there's no weakness, nothing to worry about, uh, so white can make a big, uh, big territory around A because there's uh, no weaknesses. Okay. Ah, so black, this is good, uh, uh, it I don't think it should work here, but it's good technique to try to cut your opponent's stones, and this looks like the proper way to do it. So white is able to connect, and then play up here. Aha, clamp move. This looks good to capture the, to capture this stone, and maybe this stone also. It's good technique. Uh-huh. 
Uh -huh. So in this case, um, Black can actually play this move immediately because it's Atari on the four stones. White has to connect, and then Black can come back and fix. It ends up being uh, more or less the same in the game, but um, after Black plays this connection, White should play this to link up and save the stones. So this was a, a missed opportunity for White. Uh, but White missed it playing here, and here, aha, finally Black plays the Atari. I think this is the best move of the game because um, it's. I think at the beginner levels it's very common to see, oh, my stone is an Atari, oh, I should connect and save it. But then White connects and saves this whole group. So this is like, um, uh, to use a chess analogy, this is like you view this one stone as only a pawn and instead you play this cut, which is to capture all these stones, it's, I'd say it's equivalent to like trading a pawn for a queen or a pawn for a rook, at least. You get a really nice profit and you only sacrifice one stone. This isn't even worth a pawn. This is like <laughs> this is like a third of a pawn because um, it's only a, a half point actually. So this was very big to split off this group. Very nice. And then here to kill. Very good. I think Oh, I actually didn't check, but let's see. Um, if white plays here to make the eye space bigger. Black Hanes. White plays here. So dead that way. Uh, if white just blocks directly, then it's bulky five, so that's a dead shape. Hmm. If white tries this, then this should cleanly kill. If white plays here, then this clamp should reduce it to only one eye. This one? This looks like white's best chance because it makes this A space an I for sure, but I think it's still not working because black can play the clamp. Oh, oh wait, but then this, aha, uh -huh. so that actually works. I mean the, the clamp doesn't work. Sorry, I forgot to check this uh, ahead of time, so I'm uh, looking at this right now. So the clamp, oh wait, but Black can play this Atari and connect. And then the outside is strong enough that should be okay. Okay, so actually it looks like if, uh, if anyone is watching uh, who sees a mistake in here, then please leave a comment because um, I would hate to incorrectly um, assess the life and death of a group like this. But it looks like this white group is already dead, even if white plays a move. So therefore, this move isn't necessary to kill it. Um, so this is technically a wasted move, but I don't hate it. I don't think it's awful because with this move, it's clearly dead for sure. And um, there's no Aji. So, I think after this, Black is leading the game to kill all these stones. So I don't think it's, it's not the worst mistake on Earth. <laughs> ah, so let's keep going. Mm -hmm. Here, this is another move where it's pretty slow. Um, and also, to connect to this one stone, there's a better shape, which is this, to make the bamboo. You still can't cut it, no matter what. But this is a uh, better shape because there's more liberties. And um, when it's uh, Black's turn again, Black can look to jump even farther. 
whereas in the actual game this creates an empty triangle at the A place and it's harder to um, it's more difficult to jump out with it. Uh, so White gets this point which is pretty big because uh, as I've said uh, several times now this black group in the bottom right it's very small and the eye space is I think it's not big enough to make two eyes. So if I were black I would just play this a simple move to jump out. I think it's good because it um, you don't want to become surrounded, right? If your group never becomes completely surrounded, then it can't die, <laughs> I think. Uh, either way, uh, no matter what, jumping out to save the group gives you um, escape routes. You can keep jumping this way or jump up this way. And uh, adding another stone means that later, if you had to, Maybe you could play something like this to create more eye shape if you uh, had to make emergency life. But, oh, whoops, I went back too far. But definitely, I think that uh, this group needs a move. Um, Black plays another move here. This one is um, definitely a waste. Um, let's see have some diagrams somewhere in here. Aha! Found them. So if we imagine that... Um, let's imagine that black passes or plays somewhere else and white plays here to try to live with this group. Um, black can play this to turn this square into a false eye. So if white connects, this is the 678 theory uh, of stones along the second line. So the theory is, and it's really more than a theory because it's actually just true, it's like a law or whatever. Um, if white has six stones on the second line all connected, then regardless of who plays first, it's dead. Um, even if black plays somewhere else and white tries to make two eyes, black can just hane and then play here to kill. No problem. If it's seven, then it depends. Um, if it's black's turn, black can play first and kill. And if it's uh, like this, hane, hane, and then throw in to reduce to one eye. But if it's white's turn, black plays somewhere else. White can go down and then two eyes. And if there's eight in a row on the second line, then it's alive. White is alive, even if black plays first. Black plays first, hane hane, and still there's space for two eyes. So when you're in this position, if you can read a, just a couple moves ahead, so black plays somewhere else, white connects, black goes here, um, you can see that this is only six on the second line, so it's dead. You don't need to add another move. Um, it looks like this would be white's best chance of living because this move turns this into an eye for sure, but it still doesn't work. Black can play here and reduce it to only one eye because remember that this is a false eye. Um, so here's another wasted move. Um, it would be, as I said, this looks good to reduce both sides and give more um, more eye space for this group. Mm. Ah, but black, I mean, white gets one more move here, and um, this is sort of how your opponent starts to get ahead in the game, where with moves like this, where white is starting to surround your group. Um, White just naturally builds a big area in the on the right side and on the bottom side. Black jumps, but I think this um, it's too over concentrated. It's like playing a. If you want to think of a chess analogy, 
Playing a move like this is like white on the first turn of the game advancing a pawn just one space, like playing e3 instead of e4. Um, already black is really strong here, and adding a move only gains a few points, whereas um, there's still a weak group in the bottom right to look after, so I think playing this to get out is the most important. Um, but also the area on the top is looking pretty big, so maybe now would be time for black to invade here. Um. With this one, similar to G12, only makes about three points, maybe, if that. But I think attaching to get out or playing this invasion now. This invasion looks pretty severe, especially now that black has this N15 stone. Um, it looks like it'll be difficult for white to handle the one stone up here. Um, this would be looking for, if white attaches, black can just connect like this. I guess white should probably play here. And then this would be the proper way to connect. Um, and with an invasion like this, even if white plays additional moves here, now black can play somewhere else, maybe peep and then play somewhere else. So black reduced white's territory by about 10 points and makes about 6 points for himself uh, in Sente, because it's black's turn again. So, uh, and I think that's about the best result that white could hope for. If white plays something like this to give away the one stone, I think that's even worse because black takes easily takes at least 12 points. And white still has to worry about, um, oh, I guess doesn't have to worry about invasions, but um, to just give away this one stone, it's... Uh, I don't know. Not good. So it's normally better to uh, attach and at least try to use the one stone. Anyway. Um, oh yeah. So here. Um, so black jumps here. And then white plays another knight's move. And so I drew in these numbers as like a comparison. This is sort of... Uh, maybe this will help to illustrate how white creates the this like big moyo and so you feel like you're getting behind. With these two moves with C and D that you played, um, in total you really only took about three points because even if black doesn't have C and D we can still imagine that, uh, oh whoops, that, oh what did I do? Hit the wrong tool. Uh, we can still imagine that black is going to get these three points. So really black only got about three more points with both of these moves because uh, black was already so strong and it's only one space jumps. Whereas white on the other hand plays these big knight's moves and with two moves makes f at least 15 points. So it's difficult when you play two moves and make three points, and your opponent plays two moves and makes 15 points, the game becomes very difficult. Uh, so, uh, I don't think it's a, it's not a huge problem though. I think this is hopefully one of the easier things to try to work on, to try to improve. Um, seeing that this move just uh, doesn't make that many additional points, whereas these two moves enclose a much bigger area. It's kind of like um, like if we go back to the very beginning for example so let's say uh, after it's black's turn after four moves is black gonna play here? I don't think so not with such a big wide open board so black takes another corner great and then here Black plays again for a, a big area, which is good. 
Is black going to play this to just take a few more points in the corner? I don't think so. It's too small, right? So in the opening, your sense of uh, what's big and small is pretty good, but when we get towards the middle game, there's uh, some slack moves where you're only taking a couple points with each move instead of playing in the bigger wide open areas. So maybe in the middle game, it would help to just take a, like, take a moment and look at um, okay, there's a lot more stones on the board, but let's pretend it's like the opening still. Um, this is a big area, so maybe I should play in the big area and try to make a lot of points here instead of playing uh, slow mo like uh, in the smaller area where you already have a lot of stones. And I hope maybe that'll. I hope that helps a little bit. <laughs> um, Black plays, I, I like these moves to force white down. Um, you force white to take only under the third line. And after gaining the strength, I think it would be really good time to play this invasion and try to um, capture more of the upper side for yourself. Um, but this, this is a similar situation to uh, the A and B moves where this doesn't really put any pressure. It doesn't attack white and it doesn't really make very many points. It only makes about four or five points. Whereas uh, an invasion like this can look to make uh, 20 points maybe if you're able to capture this stone and reduce white's territory. Um, and seeing invasions like this will come with experience. You don't have to worry too much about finding the the exact moves. I think it's more important to just see there's a lot of stones in this area already, but on the upper side, it looks like it's still fairly open. So maybe I could try something where there's, uh, where it's still fairly open. Ah, but then white fixes it. Um, this is another kind of slow move where you only make a couple points. Aha. Keep going. Okay. In the bottom right, um, this is, would be a good. This is a good life and death problem. Um, as it stands, I would consider this a Don level life and death problem because there's a few uh, tricky points um, with this cut here, this uh, Atari it changes some things. But if we assume, let's give white another stone here so that there's no cut, then I would say this is a good single digit Q life and death problem. So maybe a bit difficult for double digit Q, but I think it'd be a, a good one to look at. Um, yeah, so if you're not sure about the life and death of this group, I would encourage you to pause the video and try to figure it out on your own before I go through it, um, which I'm going to do shortly. Let's see. I put some. I have to find the variations where I went through it. Doo -doo -doo. Aha. Okay, so I went through the variations after the cut already. So. Um, so let's pretend it's white's turn. So black plays somewhere else or passes or whatever. If white plays here, I believe this is dead. Let me, s let me see if I can find the trees. Hmm. Um, if black plays... First of all, of course, if black plays somewhere else or whatever, then white can just go down and kill the two stones. So black needs to respond somehow. If black responds here, then white hanes. And if black blocks, throw in. And now it's just one eye. Um, if black blocks here, just hane and one eye. Um, so this one is uh, pretty simple, I think. 
uh, it'd be it's a good thing to study if it's not simple for you then I'd highly highly recommend taking uh, 15 20 minutes and playing through the variations to get a feel for um, the different possibilities but let's say now that black adds a move to try to live so what would be the best way to kill well normally we want to try Hane um, so white tries this Hane if black links to prevent the throw-in white pushes black blocks and white extends um, so just one eye even if black captures these two stones white can throw in and uh, this is a false eye so it's dead um, if black blocks here then white will play the throw in black captures and white extends one eye so it's dead um, so the most interesting variation after this Hane is if black captures this stone so if white just pushes black will play here and then there's two eyes one and two whoops just got a phone call <laughs> um, if white uh, throws in still two eyes so white would need to play here which looks for either A to connect back to the one stone or B. So if black blocks here, white can play this and then throw in. So false eye, black is dead. And so you might think, okay, if black blocks here, white connects and then no problem because white's connected. But um, there is a problem, <laughs> which it's from this exchange, this AB exchange, where black cut. Um, in this shape, black is able to make one more eye because black can exploit white's shortage of liberties. Um, the key is this throw in. If black captures the stone, I mean, if white captures the stone, black plays here Atari, and white can't connect because then all the stones will die. Cool. So if white sees that and fixes here instead, black can capture and make two eyes. So, um, <clears throat> other moves white could try, white could try throwing in here. Um, oh, sorry. So the conclusion is that if white plays this Hane, it doesn't work. Black is able to live with this. Whoops. Throw in. And then here. So what if white tries this? Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work because black can look for A and B to make two eyes. If white plays B, black plays A. And if white plays A, black plays B. So the throw in doesn't work. To just extend also doesn't quite work because black can play this descent now white throws in doesn't matter there's two eyes if white plays here it still doesn't work black will just link and then it's two eyes as it stands or if white connects this is a a living shape for black so my conclusion is that if black plays this move black can live but it is not played for quite a long time. <laughs> so, um, let's go back to where we were in the game. Oh, I think it was right at this point. Um, so all these, if we, um, if we think that black can't run out to get more um, eyes in the center, then it's very important for black to play this right away to live because well I mean black should play this Atari first and then here to live because um, this is very big it's 10 black stones um, so if white were to kill this group that'd be at least 20 points plus all of the actual spaces so probably 30 points and if black lives black will make 
three or four points at least on the inside. So it's a difference of about 30, 35 points. It's a very big move. Um, black plays here. I believe this does work, um, sort of. Where, and what I mean by that is, um, white can't quite cut. If white jumps down, black can kill the one stone. So if black plays here, I mean if white plays here, black goes back, white can capture, and then black can save the cut. But, so technically it's possible to connect, but it'd be much better form to play this move. This would be a better endgame. Uh, white blocks, black hanes, white blocks, black connects. And in the actual game, um, I believe it ends up at this shape anyway. It's more or less the same shape, but um, but black takes some damage, starting with this one because white is able to capture two stones in sente and then come back and fix. So it's not it's not too big a deal. It's well, black has to fix, and this is a false eye. So white makes four points from the the two captured stones and also reduces black by about three more points so it's about seven points difference I think um, which is not uh, enormous but it's still definitely worth mentioning um, <laughs> this was <laughs> a terrific move actually <laughs> I was really impressed when I saw this because I think Don level players that I play against all the time would probably play this connection without thinking about it too much but then later on white can play this uh, eventually this will become sente which is a one point reduction but this is like the very very end of the game but black fixing here basically it saves one point because this cut doesn't work for white it's no problem <laughs> um, <laughs> So this is like uh, <laughs> this is a really good move to save one point. It's uh, I'm not sure if you read all that out. Then that's absolutely fantastic. Um, that's like a Don level endgame move for sure. Um, yeah, so well done. Um, more endgame. So at at any point, Black should probably play this to live. Um, that's got to be the biggest on the board. Um, and this one, this is just another example of you play this move to make about three points, but we know in the bottom right, even if we assume the bottom right was alive, um, like let's just assume that the bottom right is actually alive, then this would be a good way to reduce white we would expect some kind of continuation like this and actually in this case black can play the Atari and then this Atari to capture four stones I mean uh, three stones so this would be six seven uh, at least seven points eight points maybe and by comparison if if white gets the first move here White's going to be able to make about five more points. So we can say that um, this move here, black makes seven points and reduces white by five. So this is worth about 12 points at least, uh, maybe even a little bit more. Um, or this monkey jump, which you do play eventually, this is also quite a big endgame point. Uh, but this one is too small. Aha. Monkey jump. Yeah. And you said in a comment, is this the proper monkey jump? Definitely. This is a really good end game point. If you assume that the bottom right is settled, um, this is the biggest end game point on the board, for sure. Um, white played this, but actually white would be able to block like this in this case, I believe if black tries to go in 
even further, then white can cleanly uh, separate, and there's no way for black to make two eyes. Um, so if black goes back, white can block, and if black cuts, Atari, capture, Atari, connect, connect. And this, this is, f mm, uh, for a double digit Q level, I think it's probably pretty difficult to see that this is dead. Um, but it'd be worth, maybe it'd be worth playing out to try to um, determine the life and death of this group. But, um, but it, it should not be able to live. Th this black group should die. So I believe this would be uh, the best response. Black should draw back here. White can block. And then black can play somewhere else if there's a really big endgame point. Or black can connect and white will connect. Uh, but white let you take even more. Um, and here you played the wedge, but you could do some first line magic. This jump is actually possible. Uh, white can't cut it directly because it's self Atari. So white has to play on the outside. Black will connect. White can connect. And then, actually, this is not necessary. Black could play somewhere else. Uh, if black plays somewhere else, then there's no way to cut. White plays here, black can kill the one stone. Um, yeah, so this is a, a really big reduction. If you compare, um, just for, let's just put these stones on the board, uh, just for, uh, to make the situation a little bit more clear. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So there's 13 stones in this area compared with um, if black plays some other move and white gets this, white will be able to make about 13 points, which is quite a big difference. Um, yeah, 13 points, end game. It's very significant. And it was Sente <laughs> because... Uh, White needs to fix here. If white plays somewhere else, then this cuts. It's, oh, it's just even... Oh. <laughs> it's terrible. It's even more. Um, so white definitely needs uh, to fix here, which makes this like a 13-point reduction in Sente for black. That's huge, 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 huge. So very good to play the monkey jump. Uh, And, aha, so this, in this situation, your one stone is in Atari, but you ignore it and play a different point, and that's really good sense. Um, if white captures the one stone, white makes three points, right? One point at H19 and two here, but you play somewhere else, which is a sente move, and you could come back later and fix if you want. Um, yeah, it's good to not just follow follow what your opponent does. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in the game, there's a Hane. <laughs> so the rest is just a uh, small end game, which I think is not... Uh, you mentioned here that uh, you forgot about the code, but it's not a big deal. It's only... I, th I believe it's one and a half points, technically, because Black's territory is reduced by one, and there's still this uh, half point co left. I'm not. Endgame math gets a little bit tricky, so this could be like a one and a quarter point, one and a half point. I don't know. Either way, it's not not a big deal. It's quite small. <laughs> and so here, White throws in. So I was expecting uh, White could play here to, to kill the group, but White missed it and played this. 
and black responded. <laughs> ah, and finally, I think probably here you realized, oh, I actually need a move to save my group. <laughs> so it was it was actually the case that you needed a move for about a hundred moves. Uh, <laughs> it's been about a hundred moves since you needed one to save it, and eventually you got it. So great, uh, and hopefully the hopefully this life and death problem will be useful a useful example. Uh, huh. And then the that's pretty much it for the game. So I think the the number one thing I would recommend, I think the, the biggest problem is not really reading. I don't think, I didn't really see any reading mistakes. Actually, now that I think about it, I think your reading is pretty good. Um, since you mentioned the, the chess stuff, uh, maybe it's fair for me to guess that you were a previous chess player, and if, or maybe still a chess player and you play both. I don't know. But um, I played chess myself growing up, and I find that um, playing chess really helped my reading in Go. Um, so I would say you don't you don't really have any reading problems. It's more uh, overall game sense. And the the one biggest thing I was gonna that I, I think I probably mentioned about five million times was uh, playing slow moves, moves that are unnecessary. Like this only makes a couple points. Um, this is a big. This would be a bigger point because it reduces white. And then, if white plays something later, you could play this. And now this move threatens to turn the whole center into territory instead of just this side. So basically, once the middle game comes around and both sides have solid groups, um, it looks like you're a little bit afraid. Um, it's like you're afraid to play moves that aren't directly attached to one of your groups. But oftentimes, like here, this invasion, it's not uh, obviously clear how this stone can connect to this group, but it can. Uh, it's very, very difficult for white to uh, kill. And um, with this, it's a little bit slow. Black could play even farther here, or even farther. I don't think black needs to worry about the cut, because there's still this to look for also. Uh, maybe, I don't know. But, um... Lost my train of thought. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, so the one big recommendation I would have is look at uh, middle games. If you're, you mentioned that you do like you like to do more reading and studying than playing. So I would recommend studying middle game situations. Um, if you ever look at professional games, um, you could try to find situations where both players have stable groups, and then try to figure out the type of moves they play because you won't see them play uh, a move like this which only gains a couple points and doesn't put any pressure you'll probably see them play invasion moves like this or really big reductions mm -hmm. um, so that would be I think that w that's where you should spend most of your energy if you're studying uh, trying to play a bit more efficient moves in the middle game. And... Mm, it's always good to do life and death, of course. Because... Um, <laughs> you don't want white to play here and kill your whole group. <laughs> so life and death, always good to study. Um, yeah, life and death. I think um, if you just played, not to keep bringing this up, but if you just played a little bit faster moves, a little bit bigger moves, 
So instead of this, an invasion or a big jump, and then white plays something and then a big jump to make a big area. Just small changes like this, I think your rank would go up pretty fast because um, I think at the end of the game, I used the score estimate and I think... Let's see, score estimate says that white won by about 20. But just with, um, whoops, do, do, do. just doing this, adding these two moves, if black, black can easily make another 20 points in the center while reducing white on both sides by I don't, 15 points in the center, compare with, Where's that one variation I had? <coughs> Whoops. Aha. Um, so if black lost by 20 points, you can see that basically it's just these two moves in the center are the total of the difference of the scores. Aha. Uh, I'm not sure if that really made sense, but like the fact that these two moves were much slower and made much fewer points than these two moves is basically the total difference in the score. If black plays a little bit faster and white plays a little bit slower, then black would have won this game. Uh, it's not uh, nothing drastic, just l taking a little bit more with each move. Uh -huh. So I would encourage you to take some risks in your future games and try some uh, daring invasions and jumping a little bit too far. Or, I mean, not too far, just a little bit farther than only playing these one space jumps at all the time. Ah, all the time. Yeah. Okay. I'm fumbling over my words too much, so I think that means I have talked enough. Um, if you have any uh, questions or comments, please let me know. Uh, you can put them down leave this video a comment and I will be happy to take a look. And if you are not Emilio, uh, but you would like one of your games reviewed, or if you'd ever like to play a teaching game with me, please leave me a comment or send me a message on YouTube and it would be my pleasure. Uh, I really, I love Go and um, I want to do what I can to help other people love this game even more. So. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Uh, if I made any mistakes or if you have any comments, down in the comment section, please. Thank you.